son-in-law, Jared Kushner, publisher of the New York Observer newspaper. He's often been at Trump's side during the campaign and now during the transition. According to the New York Times, Kushner has spoken to a lawyer about the possibility of joining the new administration. It's a story made for the headlines and the outcome is anyone's guess. So what could it mean for Kushner and for his newspaper? Joining me now, the editor-in-chief, Ken Kirsten. Great to see you, Ken. Thanks for having me, Brian. So the Observer uh, just ended its print editions. They're going to be online only. Is that related at all to Kushner's role owning the paper and possibly working with his father-in-law? No, it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with uh, the fact that we've uh, multiplied our digital readership by about seven times at the time our print and everyone else's is cratering so that's it's totally related to how people consume news what about the ownership of the paper if if uh, if Kushner is to join the administration in some form will he give up his ownership of the organization do we have any sense of that you know uh, Jared will behave uh, ethically and appropriately as he got a law, de law degree he's a smart guy he's not going to put his reputation or anything he owns in jeopardy I'm I'm not an expert on, on the laws about nepotism, but I, I know they're pretty strict, at least as far as the White House goes. And if he takes an official position, I'm, I'm sure he'll, he'll put the, the proper amount of insulation. I will say that, that I've worked at a lot of different places. Uh, despite all the uh, attacks you, you see in the media, um, Jared has uh, his finger on the scale of what the Observer covers a lot less than just about any publisher I've ever worked for. You're saying he's not involved in the editorial? He's not involved in the day-to-day -day at all. I, we, we talk every day, and he's, he's obsessed with politics as I am, so of course, you know, I hear his opinions, but he does not, you know, we've, we've run very tough There's stuff. There's been stories on, about Kushner wanting certain articles either written or not written. Yeah, you know, I mean, what, who, who wouldn't? Everybody has opinions about what the media should cover, and uh, even editors he's had who've been, uh, you know, less favorable than I am to his worldview have said he's done a pretty good job of leaving them alone. But, um, you know, we've run stories that have been very tough on his father-in-law, and we've, uh, unlike most places, we've also run stories that have been tough on uh, his father-in-law's competitors. I think that's why people get the wrong idea about The Observer. So you all talk every day. I'm curious what you and Kushner think about the coverage of the transition, the first almost two weeks of President-elect Trump. What's your interpretation? Well, I won't speak for Jared, but uh, I'll tell you that I, th I think transitions are, are always uh, times of uh, enormous controlled chaos. And it seems like the, it's going just about the, the way it has for the last couple of transitions. Um, I followed cl politics closely my entire journalism career. And there's always uh, you know bumps in the roads as names get floated. And sometimes you float someone's name to see how the press will react and to see how the, the public will react. Um, it seems like it's, it's going on a pace. The headlines about infighting, you don't buy it? I don't buy it. I think it's, it's nonsense, and I think that the obsession with how Donald Trump does everything, including where he gets dinner, is, is comic, quite frankly. So you're against having a press pool to go to dinner with him? I, I don't think it's, I, I'm not against a press pool going, I'm against it, it dominating a cycle for two news days if he decides not to have them go with him. I'm not against them, them going, but this, this idea that you can't have a private meal with your family is just, it's ludicrous. <laughs> Journalists never sit at the table, though. They're outside. You know that. They wait outside. <laughs> I do. I do. You told me off camera you think the coverage of Trump's campaign was a disgrace. Yeah, I Can think it's an why? embarrassment. I think it's embarrassed our profession. I, I think it's been ridiculous. Um, and I, I'm quite frankly shocked that there haven't been uh, resignations and firings and stuff. You know, I, I was... Resignations and firings of um, of, of different journalists who, who've just been wrong over and over and over. And then they can continue to do their job after having been wrong about the election. And, and wrong there's about no what? consequences. There's no accountability. Wrong about uh, not only what was happening. So just about everybody missed that Donald Trump was going to win this election, but also wrong about why it was happening, including uh, inexplicably after Brexit, which was a, a test run for this election. It showed.
was a, a test run for this election. It showed enormous amounts of discontent with the ordinary people who feel ignored, in that case by London elites, and in the case of America by, by coastal cultural elites. Mm -hmm. This Hamilton thing's a good example. Now, I'm, I'm willing to go on record and disagree strongly with Donald Trump. Hamilton is not overrated. It's, <laughs> it's amazing. But of, of uh, cultural elite lecturing the vice president-elect is exactly what America is disgusted by. I, hmm. I would say we're a divided country, and things like Hamilton just show the divide really, really vividly, don't they? Yeah, but and Vice President Elect Pence, I see you walking out, but I hope you are here in just a few more moments. There's nothing to do with you, ladies and gentlemen. There's nothing to do with you. We're all here sharing a story of love. The, the, the but you're play, a good New York observer, so right, don't but the play New York itself, the, the play Hamilton itself, the musical itself, is about the, the emergence of a, a two-party system, about uh, being able to have differences of point of view, hopefully without shooting each other in Weehawken. Hopefully without that. Ken, good to see you. Good to Thank see you. Thank you very Thank much you. for being here.